Sage Steele, and here's what's happening on SportsCenter right now. Tiger Woods continues making headlines, this time because his mother-in-law was taken to the hospital early this morning. Barbara Holmberg was released this afternoon after suffering from stomach pain. She was taken via ambulance at about 2.30 this morning from Tiger's mansion to Health Central Hospital in Orlando, the same hospital to which Tiger was taken after his car accident on November 27th. That is video of the Escalade following the ambulance to the hospital. Sources tell our Buster only that Tigers outfielder Curtis Granderson on the verge of being traded to the Yankees as part of a six-player, three-team deal. Granderson hit 30 home runs, stole 20 bases last season. As part of the deal, Detroit would trade all-star pitcher Edwin Jackson to the Diamondbacks. Things heating up between the Cincinnati head coach Brian Kelly and University of Notre Dame. ESPN's Joe Shad is reporting that a formal interview has not been scheduled, but there has been direct contact between the two sides about the Irish coaching vacancy. The whole process, according to Shad, could be completed within days. And that's what's happening on SportsCenter right now. Outside the lines, first report right now. A hospital emergency at Tiger Woods' home as his image continues its spiral from icon to national punchline. I would say that he needs to take his head out of the sand. You're not the only one? No. Tim Donaghy's allegations about slanting calls to help stars in extend series. What's the damage to the NBA? All ahead, outside the lines. And now, reporting for Outside the Lines. Bob Lee. As America sat down to Thanksgiving turkey, there were two sports certainties. Tiger Woods was the gold standard for athletes in terms of both image and performance. And David Stern, the longest serving commissioner, was similarly viewed among the power brokers in sports. Tonight, each confronts a major challenge. And coming up ahead, still how Stern and the NBA are handling the reemergence of allegations by convicted felon and former referee Tim Donaghy. We begin with what has metastasized into a national soap opera, the most precipitous explosion of an athlete's image we've ever seen. The good news for Tiger Woods, no new allegations of new mistresses today surfacing, but an overnight medical emergency at his Florida home involving his mother-in-law is national news. And police documents show that a witness at the accident site two weeks ago, possibly Woods' wife, told police Woods had been drinking and also had prescriptions for Ambien and Vicodin. The Tiger image and the fallout. We say hello to Darren Ravel of CNBC and also to Edward Wanawa, the senior editor of African American Golfers Digest. Guys, good to have you here. Uh, Darren, this is unprecedented. Give us a sense of the dimension of both commercially and in the intangible it factor and image what we've seen here. Well, he is the $100 million man, Bob. He's the only active athlete to ever make $100 million in endorsements in a year of the biggest blue chip brands. Uh, Nike's reacted with three statements since the accident. Gatorade has reacted with two statements, though previously, before the accident, they did decide to discontinue his Tiger brand uh, for 2010 and for the foreseeable future. And Accenture and AT&T are his only sponsors who have issued no comment. I'm not sure whether that's a factor of them not knowing what's next or whether that's a factor of them being uncomfortable with where they are now. Edward, let's talk about the golf media. Uh, there's been at least one uh, piece written by Charlie Pierce who wrote the GQ piece years ago, and he wrote it recently that even back then uh, there were certain things that were understood, he says, about Tiger on, uh, out there on the golf course and on, on the golf tour. Uh, what was the level of apprehension and uh, maybe tiptoeing around topics for the media? And I'm not even talking about personal behavior, but just dealing with Tiger Woods because he was so hot and you needed that access. Well, exactly. I mean, you didn't want to be the, the writer or the, the journalist that sort of got on Tiger's bad side because he could freeze you out in, a, in an interview. And a lot of Tiger's interviews were very scripted. I mean, he kept it about the foundation. He kept it about, you know, his life on the golf course and his achievements between the ropes. But you, know, you never really wanted to push the envelope and try to delve into Tiger's private life. So, yes, I mean, there was an there, there wasn't a, a aura of just, t you know, tiptoeing around him and being very, very careful about what you asked him about. Was and, and Bob, Bob, what I would say here is that, you know, things have changed. The TMZs and the Raider Onlines and everyone who's reporting yeah, these things, uh, they don't ever need a PGA Tour credential. They don't ever need a one-on-one -on -one with Tiger Woods. And so the game that was played, you know, for as long as we know it, is not the game that these guys are playing on. And, and so that's really what's changed. Edward, yeah, I'm really... 
I was going to say, what is stopping anyone from the uh, blog, from the so-called tabloid media, from buying gallery tickets to these uh, and standing right up against the rope line uh, with a flip camera and, and can, trying to get something newsworthy? Well, uh, we know, nothing. Bob, we know mean, there's no rules uh, anymore. We've seen this. There, there, <laughs> there are no rules anymore as far as getting information, as far as getting the scoop, as far as getting what will get clicks. And so you know, the, the, even if the, the, they're not represented as a reporter, they're going to try to get in because you can imagine that the PGA Tour is probably going to come up with some sort of policy and all the tournaments are going to come up with some sort of policy as to who's in and who's out. And I don't know if, if, if that means that they're going to play by the rules. So, Edward, what are we going to see in terms of the, of the atmosphere when he, he's got to get back to playing golf sometime in January? Yes, I, I think it's going to be an even more a bigger media circus because, as Darren alluded to earlier, you're going to have a whole new crop of journalists coming out there that really don't have anything to do with golf. You just want to see what Tiger's going to do, what he's going to say, because what this whole in, entire event has done for Tiger is, is brought him out of that veil of secrecy that Tiger was so used to living in. And now the, the game, you know, the rules have changed. Everything is going to be different when he comes back. Back in 1992, Darren, there was a, a phrase uh, that was coined by Betsy Wright of the Clinton campaign. It was, it's an inelegant in, in, in one, but it was bimbo eruptions. Now, Bill Clinton survived that to become president of the United States for two terms. Uh, what's the prognosis for Tiger Woods, and, and, and by what measure will we say he has survived and thrived past this? Unfortunately, I don't think you can tell right now. There really is no comparable. You know, people want to mention uh, Kobe Bryant. It's not there. Obviously, yes. Kobe had a, a criminal case which was dropped and a, a civil case that was settled. There is no comparable, not only to the story, to the dimension as far as the endorsements. We've never seen it. So all I'll say is, you know, the PGA Tour, uh, the interest is going to be unbelievable and obviously Tiger is going to be challenged but from an endorsement standpoint we've never seen this will they stick with him if his golf game continues uh, it, it is just as, as as many twists and turns as this story has that's how many uh, different uh, endings you could come up with now, Tiger drives TV numbers Edward we, we know that when he's in a tournament it's multi it's multiples more that we'll watch uh, so in a perverse sense, it, it might this not be the best thing that could happen early on, at least in 2010? Yes, I think so. I, th I think the, the first tournament that Tiger plays in is going to have uh, remarkable numbers. You know, so in, in a really ironic way, this, this trouble off the course is going to drive interest on the course uh, out of the roof. I really do believe it's going to be great for golf. What about and the I should say, I should say, Bob, I should say, Bob, that uh, that Torrey Pines tournament where he, he would be speculated to play in, uh, out of all the tournaments that are not majors, I believe 15 out of the last 20 years, they've been the number one non-major. They're looking for a sponsor right now. I've been told that uh, it's worth about 15 to 20 million dollars per for that one year. If for Tiger a does make that, yeah, for for Tiger to make that, that his year. first tournament, I will say the Under PGA these Tour might not sell that one year. They like, might not. They might tell them we don't want to start this precedent. How much more of is that done up on, on a per year basis because of what we're looking at in terms of a media circus, and it certainly we're part of it. How much is it, is it that much larger now? Well, I, I, I was quoted this number last week. That's 15 to 20 right. million just in internet, radio, newspaper, and that's just U.S. About 30 percent more when you figure that number worldwide, and I'm sure it's gone up since then. It is just starting. Darren Ravel, you can read his sports biz blog on CNBC.com. Edward Winamwa, the editor of African American Gulf Digest. Thanks, guys. Now, Tim Donaghy hey, thank you, Bob. and the challenge he presents to David Stern in the NBA. We think we have here a rogue, isolated criminal. Uh, and I think we uh, want people to understand our system. Um, and I think I still have to be protective of my officials, including those who likely have been and will continue to be unfairly besmirched as a result of the allegations that have been made against Mr. Donaghy.